Good morning. You have no idea what your faces do for my soul every week. It's wonderful to see you all. And I saw so many new faces this morning, and I want to welcome you, especially the new people who've been here for the first time. Welcome to our congregation and into our fellowship. Um, this morning, I saw this beautiful arrangement, and I thought I have to say something about it, because sometimes it's amazing how God works, how the arrangement and the readings work together, even though the person who did the arrangement doesn't really know what the readings are. So here is a, a stone to remind us that we are only one week away from that big event at Easter. And um, this olive branch here, um, which reminds us of the Mount of Olives where Jesus was before his crucifixion, where he prayed to the Father to ask him whether this cup, cup could pass him by. And then the wonderful flowers to remind us of the creation. And we'll hear about that um, in the epistle reading, where it talks about God's creation. And that's why we have flowers on the altar every week, uh, to remind us of this wonderful creation that is God's. Quasi-mordorgenity. It's a big word, and it's a good old Latin word. And it means as newborn babes. And that is what we experience anew straight after Easter. We are newborn babes, washed clean by the blood of Christ, a holy people because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, a people filled with hope because of the resurrection of Christ, our living God. It is truly a wonderful time of the year, church year. Our watchword this morning is taken from 1 Peter 1 verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we can indeed praise God for a living hope. The grave of our God is empty. We believe in a living God, and that is what sets us apart from other religions. Let us continue the service in this living hope in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand as we pray the psalm together. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Ah, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Amen. This might be a new song, um, and I thought, good time to learn a new song. Um, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Those are the only words. Does anybody know it? Two, three, sing loudly. <laughs> from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name. Does it 
it, is it familiar now? No? A little bit. Good. Okay, let's sing it together. Yeah, a couple of times. Four times. Okay. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Good morning. Our epistle reading is found in 1 Peter 1, the verses 3 to 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here ends the reading. Hallelujah. I think you... I want to encourage you to stand for this next song.
The Gospel reading is found in John chapter 20, the verses 19 to 20 and 24 to 29. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side, stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Here ends the reading. Praise be to you, O Christ. With all
Oh, wasn't that an amazing song? You were lucky there were so many more verses, I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> Our sermon text is a well-known one, and I'm sure you will recognize it when I read it to you. Jesus and the Miraculous Catch of Fish. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said to them, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is where our reading ends. Are you giving me some more light? Okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay. I love to read these passages around Easter of how Jesus revealed himself to different people in different ways and in different places after his resurrection. Because one reaches an interesting conclusion. And that is that Jesus reveals himself differently to different people because he is interested in reaching the individual. He wants to meet us personally in our specific situation. Jesus sees us in our uniqueness, in our individuality, and comes to meet us right there. What an amazing thought. So we never have to think that this is what faith should look like, or that is how it should be lived, because it is different for every person. And that is a very freeing thought. It is not up to me to dictate how faith should be lived out, or what it should look like. That is between you and God, and me and God. All we need to do is live in communion with God, Listen to the small, still voice of the Spirit of God, the voice that leads us on, the voice that we are invited to follow. Our sermon text is an example of a way Jesus revealed himself after his resurrection to Peter and some other disciples while they were fishing. But before we look at the sermon text more closely, let's look at the preceding text to see who else 
Jesus revealed himself to and how. The first person Jesus revealed himself to after his resurrection was Mary Magdalene, when she went to the tomb with herbs and oil to embalm his body. As we know by now, the large stone in front of the tomb had been rolled away, and Jesus' body was no longer there. She was understandably shocked and dismayed, and Jesus meets her and acknowledges her feelings He says, why are you crying? He sees her emotion and allows it. We often just need permission to cry without having to feel that we need to hide our weeping. And then he calls her by name, a deeply personal reaching out through her tears. She recognizes him in that instant and cries out, Raboni, teacher. And then he continues on this very personal note by saying, go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Wow, there's such reassurance in those words. And with these words, Jesus underlines the fact that there is no longer a division between us and God. After the ultimate sacrifice, his death on the cross, our relationship with God has become deeply intimate. The curtain in the temple is torn in half. We have direct access to God. Then Jesus appears to some of the disciples behind locked doors. They are still traumatized from the happenings of the past few days. It had become dangerous to be associated with Jesus, the troublemaker, the heretic even, and the disciples knew it. They were hiding behind those locked doors, hoping for things to settle down before they ventured out again. And into this fear, Jesus appears to them and says, Peace be with you. More than anything, that is what this group of people needed to hear. Their hearts and spirit needed to be stilled by this reassuring proclamation of Jesus. Peace be with you. And then he breathes the Holy Spirit on them and says, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he gives them a new purpose, a hope for a future, and certainty that there is life beyond the fear they are now trapped in. Then he reveals himself to Thomas who would not believe the other disciples when they told him that they had seen the Lord. Jesus is not happy about Thomas's doubting. He says to Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. But despite this rebuke, Jesus still meets him in the way that Thomas needs it. And he says, Put your fingers here. See my hands. Stop doubting and believe. He also said, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Sometimes we also doubt. And even though it is not right, Jesus addresses it and helps us through our doubts to a more deeply rooted faith. We do, not, we do not have to hide our doubts from Jesus. He wants to help us through these doubts, and he wants to anchor our faith. Right, now and back to our sermon text. So the fourth time he reveals himself after his resurrection is when he meets Peter and the other disciples fishing. They have been fishing all night without a single catch. And he says, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. They do so and catch so many fish 
that they can hardly haul the net in. Sometimes we simply have to throw the net out on the other side. Let's look at some everyday examples of what this throwing the net out on the other side might look like. In our relationships, how often do we not always land in the same old patterns? Sometimes we need to throw the net out on the other side, and we might get surprising results. Let me give you some personal examples. I have a technician at a computer store who I just have a personality clash with. If I had to be honest, he just irritates me. He's full of his own self-righteousness, uh, self-importance, and makes me feel like I'm totally dependent on him, which I am, which makes it even more irritating. And he makes me feel like he's doing, a, doing me a favor by helping me. And on a particular day, he also had a huge stock take to do, which made the whole experience even more aggravating. Anyway, I seem to spend a lot of time at computer repairs, and every time I dread going because of this man. So at the beginning of the week, I needed to pay the computer man a visit again. And by that time, I had given my sermon some thought, and I thought, let me throw my net out on the other side. Let me walk in his shoes for a bit. I greeted him, and instead of getting irritated, when he hardly made eye contact and shuffled endless paper, papers around, I asked him how his stock take went the other day and that I could see how stressed he was. He replied that his manager eventually got three people to help him with the stock take, which he would normally have done on his own. And I said how amazing that was, and I told him how much I appreciated that he got my faulty router replaced. I threw my net out on the other side, and my catch was a technician who felt appreciated, smiled behind his mask, and gave me such good service. And the surprising catch was that I too left the store with a spring in my step instead of the usual thundercloud over my head. A second example was when I, when I had really hurt someone in my family recently with something I said. And instead of the typical human response of withdrawal or anger against me, which I deserved, the person threw her net out on the other side and offered an unexpected response. And the catch of the day was forgiveness and reconciliation. There are a myriad of ways that we can throw out our net on the other side every day. We just need to take the time to sit with God, listen, and act. In the stresses of life that spill into our marriages, an unexpected gesture, word, or gift can bring in a catch of love. In our child-rearing, affirming words instead of the usual litany of shouting can bring in a catch of a smiling child with a confident glint in their eye. Instead of the obligatory coin thrown into a car guard's hand, a kind word when packing the boot can bring in a catch of an appreciative laugh from a person who feels seen. A stop to drop off an Easter egg at the security guard replaces the usual wave and brings in a catch of a little joy into a long day. And sometimes it's not even about throwing out the net or about the catch. Sometimes Jesus just says, come, let's commune a while and have, break and have a breakfast braai on the beach together. I read from our sermon text. They saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Amen.
now we will sing um, Seek You First, the Kingdom of God. And I thought to sing it a bit more consciously because it's a well-known song. But we heard about listening God in the sermon just now. And as we sing it, let's listen to each other. Because that half of the congregation will sing with Brenda. And you will always sing the verse. And we will um, sing the hallelujah. No. We will... Um, both sing the verse, and then you carry on with the hallelujah, and we sing the first verse again. So this half of the congregation, sing with me, and that half with Brenda. And let's practice listening. pray together. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the miracle of Easter. Thank you that we are a people who believe in a risen Lord, a Lord who wants to show us where the good catch is, where we can make a difference when we throw out our net on the other side. Open our ears to your prompting and your direction as you show us where that other side is. Lord, we bring our COVID vaccination program to you. It has stalled, and we pray that you give decision makers and government the courage to make good decisions, decisions that are right for the people. Take away all pride and anything else that stands in the way of asking for cooperation from the private sector. 
we place a good, effective way forward into your hands, Lord. Father, the fight against corruption in South Africa is a slow and lonely road. Strengthen the few people who are on the right road. Fill them with your courage, with your determination to let good prevail over evil. It cannot be done without your intervention, Lord. We plead for your hand of protection over the people whose heart and spirit are in the right place. Father of light, we will never stop beseeching you to save this country from the mire of corruption. We pray for our live services that more and more people accept our invitation to come that you raise up people to become active in this congregation. Give us all courage to speak out for what we want to see happen in our midst and awaken people to make these visions happen. Bless the worldwide church. Bless us and bless our country in Jesus' name. Let's pray the words that Jesus taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and we will now hear the announcements. Good morning everyone. The announcements today are as follows. Last week's offering was for the care group of NGLC and amounted to 1,597 rand. Today's offering is for the circuit youth work. The congregation is reminded of the extraordinary general meeting on 18 April, straight after the service. The only point on the agenda is nomination of candidate for the bishop's election. The suggested candidate and the suggestion already made by several of our members is Pastor Petra Roers. Please take the time to familiarize yourself with her biography or any other candidate you would like to propose. The next co-worker training will be held uh, on 22 May via Zoom. More details can be found on the flyer outside hanging on the notice board, or please check your emails. The closing date for registration is 17 May, and the limit is 30 participants per course. The Church of the Redeemer in Hillcrest will be organizing a drive through meat sale on Saturday 29 May. The meat catalog and payment details are on uh, your emails, and are also outside on the notice board. May the God, the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit bless our congregation and all its members in abundance of his grace. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. You can remain standing for the last song.
Be blessed as you go out with joy and enjoy throwing your net out on the other side. Bye.